What's up YouTube? In this jQuery basics tutorial, we'll cover how to get the value from one element and apply it to another element using jQuery events. Feel free to clone the clonable in the description of this video to follow along. Let's get started. All right, so to get started, let's right click anywhere on the page and click inspect, and then we'll head over to the console tab. Here we can write jQuery and see it update the page in real time. We'll start by selecting an element. We'll use the dollar sign, open and close parentheses. Inside that we'll do two single or double quotes. And now we can pass in any selector like an H1, an ID, or a class name. So let's go ahead and click here to copy the class name of our heading to element. And if we basically hit enter, it's gonna return an element for us. So we can open this up and hover. You'll see there's only one of these on the page with the class of heading two. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the text of that element. So we'll hit the up arrow key to return the last thing we typed. And then we'll do dot text, open and close parentheses, hit enter, and it returns the content of world. So next we wanna set the text. So we'll hit the up arrow key again. Inside here, we'll pass in a string and just plug in your name there and hit enter. And you'll notice it updated the content of our heading two to be whatever text you set there. So let's go ahead and clear the console by clicking this button here. And for our first exercise, what we're gonna do is get the content of heading one and apply it to the content of heading two. So let's copy this class, heading one. We're basically going to select that element and we're gonna do dot text to return the content of it. And we end each line with a semicolon. Now we wanna save this in a variable so we can reuse it. So to declare a variable, we type let, let, and then we can name the variable whatever we'd like. In this case, I'll call it my text content. And you'll notice that only the first word starts with a lowercase letter. This is camel case and how we name our variables. So I'm gonna hit the shift key plus the enter key to basically create a new line. And now that we have the content of heading one saved, we're gonna select the heading two element. So just like this, and then we wanna set the text, but we're not gonna use a string this time. We're actually going to pass in a variable name. This variable we created above in the line with a semicolon and then just hit enter. And what you'll notice is it copied the text content from the first heading and applied it to the second heading. So that completes our first exercise. Let's jump into the second. Let's start by adding some content in this first form field. We're gonna use jQuery to copy the content of this field and paste it into the second field. So let's click in the console, hit the up arrow key to return the last thing we typed. Here we're gonna copy the class name of this field one and paste it in here. And we'll copy the class name of field two and paste it in here. Now for form fields, instead of using dot text, we can do dot VAL, which stands for value. And we're just getting the value of that form field one and applying it to form field two. And if we hit enter, then this is now added into the second field. Let's keep moving on. Here, let's use jQuery to find out the width of box one. So we'll basically target that element right here. And then this is a CSS property and we can pass in any property here like background color, height, but in this case, we're passing in width and then we'll just enter. And it says the width of box one is 200 pixels. So now let's apply a new width. So we'll hit the up arrow key and here we can add a comma and pass in another string. And in this case, we're applying 100 pixels to the width property. So if we hit enter here, you'll notice box one shrinks down to 100 pixels. So next, let's basically get the width of box one and apply it to box two. So what we'll do is basically just target box one and we want to find out its width like so. And then we'll save this in a variable. Maybe we'll call that variable box width and we'll set it equal to the box one width. Now we can basically select the box two element and basically here we're going to apply a width. So we wanna apply a width and we're gonna pass in this variable of box width right here and then end the line with a semicolon. And when we hit enter, notice that box two shrinks down to the same width as box one. Let's jump into the next exercise. Here we're gonna get the URL of image one and use it to update image two. Under your image settings, be sure to hit command plus shift plus O and turn off the responsive image checkbox because this creates multiple URLs for each image. 
for different sizes. So what we're gonna do is copy the class name of image one, and we'll basically target that element here. We're gonna target an attribute, which is ATTR, and then in there we'll pass an SRC, which stands for source, and hit enter. Notice how it returns the URL of image one. We can even apply a new URL to that image by passing in a string here and then pasting a URL to the image. In this case though, we just need to get the URL of image one and we'll save it in a variable called image source. And from there, we're gonna create a new line. And here we basically want to target the image two class. So we'll copy that in. We wanna set an attribute of source on image two. In this case, we're updating the source to the source of image one, so this variable here. And what you'll notice when we hit enter is image two updates to image one. Let's jump into the next one. Here, we're gonna wanna get the URL from link one and apply it to link two. So link one is going out to YouTube right now, and link two is going out to the Webflow showcase. So what we're gonna do is hit that arrow key to select the last thing we had, We'll copy the link one class and we're basically going to paste it in here. The link is also an attribute, but this attribute is actually called href where we get the URL of a link. And here for link two, we're going to copy in that class name and we want to set the href to something else. So I'm gonna name this something like my URL and then I'm gonna use that variable name again down here. So we're getting the URL from link one and applying it to link two. And we'll notice once we hit enter, if we click on this now, it sends us off to YouTube just the way we would expect. So let's dive into the next one. Here we're getting into the basics of jQuery events. So whenever the user hovers over one of these images, we wanna update the image on the right. Whenever a user does a certain action, we can run some code. And I'm gonna head over to my jQuery builder and for the trigger type, I'm gonna select hover in. This is what's known as a mouse enter event. I'll basically copy this code and paste it in the console and I'll copy the class of my small images here. So we're saying whenever the mouse enters over one of these small images, we also wanna run this on click though for touch devices where there's no sort of hover in, hover out. And what we're gonna do is get the URL of the image we hovered over. So to get the image we hovered over instead of every image, we use the keyword this and we wanna get the attribute of that image and the attribute we're looking for is the source. We'll save it in a variable called my image. And then from there, we'll just create a new line and we'll target the large image that we have here. And we basically want to set an attribute on this one. We're going to be updating its source to be equal to the my image variable, just like so. And this will happen anytime we hover over or click on one of the small images. So if we hit enter, you'll notice now we can hover over any of these and that's working perfectly linked up to the larger image. Let's jump into the next. So here, while the user is typing in this form field, we want to update the content of this text box. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key. I'll copy the class of this field and I'm going to paste it in here. Our events are going to be whenever the key is released up. So key up is an event whenever the user releases off a key. And also for mobile, we'll include touch end. So when their finger releases off the screen, what we're going to want to do is get the value of this form field. So let's create a variable called field value and we'll set it equal to this, which is the form field we're typing on. And we'll do dot value to get the value of that element. Then from there, we're going to copy this uh, class of this text element named text. And we wanna update the text content of that element to be this variable right here. So if we basically hit enter here, notice while we're typing in real time, the content on the right is being updated and that's working. So let's jump into the next one. Here we wanna update the content inside this right panel based on one of the options chosen. So in Webflow, you'll notice each of these buttons have the same attributes of data color, data price, and data URL, but the values of each of these attributes change per the button. So what we're gonna do is hit the up arrow key. We wanna get the option button class right here, and we're gonna say whenever the user clicks on one of those buttons. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically create a variable, and we'll set it equal to my color. 
And then what we're gonna do is set that equal to this, which is the option button we clicked on. We wanna get an attribute and it'll be the data color attribute that we created in Webflow. So then I'll just copy this line here and then basically create a new line. And here we're gonna say, let my price, we'll name this one my price, and we'll set it equal to the data price attribute we created in Webflow. And then down here, we're gonna say, let my URL, and we'll set it equal to the data URL attribute. So each of these buttons have different values for these things, and whenever we click on a button, we're gonna get the value based on the attribute and button we clicked on. From there, we just wanna apply it to some different content. So here we have our column two, I'm gonna copy the class, and then I'm basically going to target this element here. We wanna set its CSS, and we're gonna set its background color, and we wanna apply the my color variable that we created above. And then next, we're going to copy this price text box, and we're basically going to target that here. And what we're gonna do is set the text of that to be equal to the my price variable that we created above, um, so that it'll just update the text content. And then finally, we have this buy now button. So we'll basically copy this, and we want to set its attribute, and we wanna apply the href, the URL of that button, to be equal to the my URL variable we created above. So now, if we basically hit enter, what we'll notice anytime we click on one of these options, it's updating the price, it's updating the background color, and also you'll notice it updates the URL. This one's going to Google, this one to Yahoo, and this one to Bing, and it's all based on the options we've chosen here. So let's jump into the last exercise. So in this last example, we wanna update this text and update this progress bar based on the value of our range slider here. So in Webflow in an embed, I have a form input element set to a type of range. And then basically it's min is zero, the maximum value is 275, and it will start off at zero. So our total goal is 275 here. I also have this progress fill div that I can animate the width of to represent a progress bar. So let's basically start by targeting our range slider. And what we can do is try and get the value of that range slider since it's just a form field element. Let me drag it up a little bit and then hit enter. You notice it returned the value 173, but it's a string and we can't do any sort of math with that since it's not actually a number, it's just text. But what we can do is just add a plus sign in front of this and hit enter. And now you'll notice it converted the string to a number that we can actually add, divide, and do math with. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow key a couple times till I get to my last event type. I'm gonna copy this range slider one more time. Now for the events, I'm gonna pass in mouse move so that way it's updating while my cursor is moving over this element in real time. But that won't work on tablet or mobile, it only works on desktop. Um, so what we can also pass in is change. Change works for most form fields whenever the value changes, but um, it waits till we focus out. So it's not real time updating while we're dragging over it, but that'll work just fine for a mobile fallback there. Um, so what we're gonna do with all this is first we want to uh, create a variable, call it my value, and we'll set it equal to this, which is the range slider form field dot val. And remember we wanna convert that string to a number. So we'll just add a plus sign in front of it. And then from there, we wanna update the text on the page. So this text has a class of amount saved. So I'll just paste that in there. I'll do dot text and I'll update it to my value. Um, so that will update this little uh, span right there. And then from there, we wanna set the progress bar width. Um, so to do this, we need to convert the progress number to a percent because right now it'll only be the 275 or whatever number we end up having there. So let's create a variable called progress and we'll set it equal to my value. So the value of this form field and let's divide it by the total number we're shooting for. So 275 in this case. And let's just say uh, maybe the number was 125 and we divided that value by 275. Um, that would give us a decimal point. But if we multiply that by 100, that would give us a percentage type number. So all we had to do is multiply this final value by 100. And now we wanna set the width of our progress fill div. 
So what we can do here is just target that class and set it CSS. We want to set its width here, and then we're going to set it to progress. Now by default, this will be a pixel value, but we want to make it a percent. So we'll just add on a percent sign sort of to the end of it like this. And then we can basically run this. And what we'll notice here is while we're dragging over this field, the numbers counting up and the progress bar width is being updated in real time based on the value of our form field. That wraps up how to get and set values using jQuery events. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one.